After losing all her money, Kim is forced to move into a small apartment with her mother and adjust to the poor life. Finding a job at a sports store, she meets a man she loves, who changes her life. In the opening scene, we get to see Kim, the protagonist of the story. She is an attractive young woman with blonde hair and ocean blue eyes. It is important to mention that she is filthy rich and has a luxurious lifestyle. We see her getting into her sports car and hitting the town. After shopping at a luxurious store with her besties, she goes to have lunch with her closest friend. Pulling up to the restaurant, she gets out of the car and throws the keys to the valet. She asks him to wash the car but he informs her that they don't do that. Not taking no for an answer, she asks him whether she wants to complain to someone in a rather threatening tone, so he assures her that the car will be washed. You can do anything when you put your mind to it is what says which gives the valet a great idea. Little does she know what will wait for her once she finishes her lunch. Inside, she sits with her childhood friend Dana. Dana has known Kim since they were little and their friendship has lasted for many years. Dana is an attractive young woman with piercing dark brown eyes and pretty micro braids. She asks Kim how her love life's going but Kim asks her not to ask silly questions. Interested, she asks Kim about a guy named Scott she used to date, but Kim claims that he was boring and that is why she dumped him. The waiter comes to collect the check when Kim offers to pay and hands him his card. Getting back to the conversation, she asks about Martin. Dana claims that he is still the perfect guy she married and that his business in renting cars has been doing well. Kim can't grasp the concept that Dana doesn't care about her husband's earnings, but Dana claims that she loves Martin no matter what. She reminisces about the time they were kids and wishes the old Kim would come back, saying that she used to be fun. Kim disregards her attitude toward her becoming a sophisticated woman, one who is in total control of herself and her life. The waiter comes back apologizing and asks Kim whether she has another card. She claims that the card is perfectly good and asks him to try it again, but he admits to having tried it twice. They get up and try to pay at the register. However, every other card she gives keeps declining and it frustrates her. She is embarrassed and feels degraded, so she lets all of her frustration on the poor waiter and even threatens to sue them for slander. Not wanting to bring any more attention to them, Dana hands her card and discards the situation as a computer error. Leaving the restaurant, they see Kim's car on a tow truck driving off. Kim runs after the car screaming and demanding her car back. Returning to the restaurant, she starts screaming at the valet for not doing his job properly he just hands her the documents for the repo and her bags before leaving her there. She immediately calls her lawyer and starts screaming at him as well, demanding he meets her at her place. Returning home, she puts the bags down before heading to see her lawyer. Of course, she starts screaming at him but he tells her to be quiet and to sit down. She is shocked by his behavior but he lets her know immediately that all of her money is gone. Baffled, she asks how the money's gone when the business is thriving. He puts the blame on her unnecessary spending and her trips all over the world. She is terrified of what to do next when James tells her that she's broke and has nothing in the bank. Her mother Martha comes as well and she is shocked at her daughter's behavior. Martha is a beautiful lady and we can see who Kim got her looks from. Her lavish blonde hair compliments her ocean blue eyes and her charming smile. She was bombarded by questions from Kim about her money. However, James lets them know that there's nothing they can do about the situation and advises them to get a job. Martha can work in his company and Kim is left to find a job on her own. As for their home, he's willing to let them stay in an apartment in a building he owns. Kim searches for a job everywhere but she can't seem to find one. Her attitude and her bratty behavior are not attractive to most employers. Despite her visiting the places she usually shops or goes to, she is still unable to find a job. She complains to Dana, and Dana tells her that her attitude might be the problem. Dana is baffled when Kim says that she needs to find a job in a couple of days that pays at least $10,000. She lets her know that she needs to lower her expectations and not expect to be the boss immediately. Kim admits that she's broke and desperate, and even mentions that she doesn't have a car. Dana's face lights up as she realizes that she can help her get a car by getting a loaner from her husband's car rental. She even claims that she can get her a job as a sales assistant at a sports shop, and so we see Kim going to Goodly Sports the next day. Entering the store, she goes to one of the ellipticals to take a closer look at it. A charming lady named Dee approaches her and thanks her for coming. Seeing that Kim is interested in the elliptical, she asks Kim whether she knows anything about it, so Kim proceeds to give her all the details about the fitness machine. Dee is surprised and assumes Kim knows a lot about fitness machines, to which Kim replies with an attitude, claiming that to look as good as her, one would have to work out here and there. Kim is asked whether she knows anything about sports goods when she spots a lady choosing the wrong weights. Dee is confused at Kim's sudden reaction as she turns around to see what's happening. Kim runs up to the lady and lets her know that the weight she's trying to buy is made out of cast iron with metal scorings. Not wanting for her to ruin her manicure, she suggests the lady buy weights covered in neoprene that won't slip if she sweats. The lady takes the weight and leaves when Dee comes around and congratulates Kim. She claims that Kim had done an amazing job as she sold a more expensive product, 
and a better product for her needs. Dee takes Kim to the counter to meet Michael, the owner of the store. Kim is amazed to see such an attractive young man in front of her. Michael is a charming, handsome man, with a fit physique and sharp features. Dee tells him that Kim doesn't have any experience in retailing but has a lot of potential. So Michael asks Kim whether she's willing to learn. Kim promises to learn everything she needs for the job, so Michael hires her right away. However, Kim is shocked to find out that she has to show up at 8 a.m. for her first day of work. She even assumes that it's negotiable but soon realizes that she has to do as she's told. Thanking them for the opportunity, she leaves the store satisfied. Getting to the building where she's supposed to reside with Martha, she gets frustrated about not being able to find a parking space. Getting out of the car, she sees James and asks him where the garage is. He tells her that there's no garage and she's free to park wherever she wants. Going up to the apartment, she is shocked to see how small it is once her mother lets her in. Asking where's the rest of it, she assumes that there's a guest room at least. But her mother lets her know that it is a one-storage apartment. Kim doesn't want to accept that and asks Mathra whether James can give them a better apartment. Martha lets her know that James is not giving her anything and that she has to pay rent every month. Speaking of rent, she asks her daughter how she's going to pay off her share, so Kim lets her know about the job she's gotten. Her first day at the store comes, and we see her in the uniform but in rather uncomfortable heels. Dee asks her whether she's sure about working in those shoes and she assures her that she is. She spots a customer looking through some jogging shoes and suggests Kim tries to help him. Getting to him, Kim greets the young man and asks whether there's anything she can help with. The man needs running shoes and not only does Kim help him buy them, he gets a whole outfit for running. After the man leaves, Dee goes up to Kai and congratulates her on the amazing first sale. We find out that Michael has a son as we see him picking him up from school. Something seems to be bothering Tate as he's not his usual talkative self. Michael asks him what's wrong and Tate reveals that his classmate told everyone that he will be going to the Arizona Pro Baseball Camp that summer, which is where Tate wants to go. Michael lets him know that money is tight at the moment but he still doesn't understand, claiming that his mother would have let him go. Some time passes and payday finally arrives. Everyone gets their letter and Kim opens it with anticipation. However, she's disappointed to see that she's only getting $500 for the week. She complains to Dee but Dee reminds her about the tax intake. After work, Kim calls Dana to complain but she assures her that she's getting more than some people do. Kim doesn't want to reside with Martha, but it seems like she has no choice, considering the amount she's getting. Dana suggests she comes to stay with her husband but Kim declines as she thinks that it's not a good idea. That's what friends are for, says Dana, which gives Kim the idea to call her rich friends Rebecca and Shauna. Kim doesn't think that staying with them will be good for Kim, so she advises her to get a second job. Exhausted, Kim complains about already having a job but Dana reassures her that a second job is a common thing. On her way back, she passes by Chester's, a pizzeria that has a help-needed sign at the front. Kim contemplates going and asking for a job but decides to leave it for some other day. She sits to have lunch by herself and decides to call Rebecca and Shauna. Calling Rebecca, she expects her to pick up but it goes straight to voicemail. Kim asks her whether she can help her out but she doesn't know that Rebecca and Shauna are together and both of them don't want to answer the phone. She calls Shauna next, and Shauna doesn't even let it go to voicemail. Having no other choice, she goes to her mother's in the evening with her suitcases. Martha is excited to stay with her daughter but Kim can't believe that they'll have to share a bedroom. However, Martha lets her know that the bedroom is hers and that she's sleeping in the living room. As time passes Kim gets to learn more about her job, and Michael teaches her about the differences between softball and baseball. The biggest issue customers have is differentiating the gloves and bats between these sports. Kim thinks that it looks easy, but Michael lets her know that it's easiest to learn while watching it, and invites her to come to the baseball practice he will be holding the following day. The next day comes and Kim goes to practice in a rather fancy outfit, not appropriate for playing baseball. Michael sees her and runs to her immediately, with David following close by. He greets her, and David is rather interested in getting to know who she is, but Michael sends him back to the field. Looking at her heels, Michael advises her to wear something more casual the next time so she can run. Luckily, Michael remembers that he has a spare shirt in his car, so he gives it to her to put it on. They start learning by tossing the ball and Kim finds it more and more interesting as they play. She even takes her heels off to play barefoot so she's better at the game. After they finish the game, Kim thanks him for the experience, and claims that she didn't know that baseball could be so easy. Michael lets her know that baseball is hard and that she was just preparing to learn baseball. Before leaving, Kim thanks Michael for teaching her and suggests she buys lunch to repay him. However, Michael says that he has to take his son home and Kim is shocked to learn that David is his son. Despite being shocked, she remains cool and smiles. Later in the evening, we get to see David and Michael at Chester's. While the chef is making the delicious pizzas, we hear David talking about Kim. He claims that she's pretty and nice, which is the perfect girl for him. 
However, Michael assures him that it was pure business and asks him not to worry about him. It seems like Kim can't adjust to her life yet, as she sits down with her mother, only to complain that they're living like peasants. Martha assures her that her health and her job are more than enough for her to have a good life. Kim is unsatisfied with the amount she makes so Martha suggests she gets a second job, as it is easier to find another job when you already have one. Kim doesn't believe that she even knows what it's like to have little money, but Martha assures her that her father had nothing when they got married. Working hard, they barely even saw each other in the first years but they held strong until they were rich. Kim apologizes for her attitude and remembers that the situation is hard on her mother as well, but Martha thanks her for being there with her. Martha's words get to Kim as she goes to get a job at Chester's the next evening. Chester, the owner of the pizza place, asks her if she has any experience and she lets him know that she exclusively ate at restaurants before she lost her money. Seeing that the girl's confident, Chester hires her on the spot. Kim returns home with a box of pizza so her mother and she enjoy dinner together. Martha thanks her for the pizza and asks her to bring one every night. Kim's happy that she's found a second job but wonders where the paycheck from her mother's job is. Martha lets her know that the company pays monthly and assures her that the check should be arriving soon. The next day, while Kim's carrying a box of stuff, a rude customer asks for help. She lets him know that she'll be with him soon because she has to put the box away. However, the man demands she help him immediately as he doesn't have a lot of time. Putting the box down, Kim takes him to the skateboard aisle to show him some of the skateboards they have. Like a professional, she asks whether he's experienced but he tells her that it's for a kid, and it shouldn't be hard for her to understand that it's not rocket science. She asks him about size and price, but he assures her that he doesn't care about price, as his shoes cost more than what she makes in a week. At Chester's, Kim gets handed a shirt as a part of the uniform she has to wear while working. Despite not wanting to put on the colorful shirt, she puts it on and gets to work. She seems to be handling it well, despite it being crowded. Dana calls to check up on her bestie and to motivate her that things get better, and that puts a smile on Kim's face. After a long day of practice, Michael and David go to Chester's for a delicious treat. Getting into the restaurant, they see Kim at the cash register. Michael is shocked to see her there and she tells her that she got the job because money's tight. Concerned, he asks her whether he's not paying her enough, but she assures him that her time at the store has been wonderful, it's just that she needs extra money. They sit down and enjoy their pizza when David gets up for another refill. While Kim's pouring him some root beer, he asks her what she likes to do for fun and she lets him know that she loves the snow, the beach, and good food. She mentions that she likes watching him play baseball, so he invites her to watch him play a game on Sunday. The little kid is smart as he uses his refills to find out more about Kim, like what her favorite color is, her favorite TV show, and even how old she is. After they finish their dinner, Michael takes the plates and brings them to the counter. He thanks her for the pizza and the great customer service despite refilling David's cup many times, but she assures him that it's no problem. After her shift's over, Kim counts the money in the tip jar but it seems like it isn't enough. She asks Chester whether she's doing a bad job, and he tells her that it isn't fair because some people don't like paying for the service. He goes to lock the door when a knock can be heard. Opening the door, he sees Martha and tells her that they're closed but she doesn't take no for an answer, and lets herself in. They enjoy a delicious pizza together when Martha asks Chester if there's a partner in his life. Chester claims that he's married to the restaurant and Kim chimes in, saying that he and Michael have a lot in common. Chester lets her know that Michael hadn't always been like that, unfortunately, he changed when his wife died three years ago. Kim heads home but Martha stays to finish the pizza. After eating the pizza, Chester walks Martha to her car. They talk about the loss of her money but she changes the subject and asks about him. He tells her his family had come from Italy when he was 15 and he has been working in the pizza shop ever since. Martha claims to love Italy and everything Italian, because she and her late husband went on a honeymoon there. Sunday comes and we can see David in the game. Unfortunately, he ends up losing because he gets distracted by Kim waving at him. After the game, Michael and David greet Kim and thank her for coming. She claims to love watching him play and is excited to learn more about baseball. The next day at work, Dee approaches Michael and asks him to go on a date with Laura, a nice girl she knows that Michael would love. He declines her offer but she doesn't take no for an answer, so he finally agrees, despite not wanting to go. Kim meets up with Dana for lunch and she congratulates her for living in the real world. At work, Kim gets approached by a gorgeous lady who asks her about Michael. She reveals that she's going on a blind date with him and wants to find out what kind of a guy he is. Kim's heart drops for a second because she's already fallen for him, but she assures the girl that he is a great boss and an amazing guy. Laura thanks her for the advice and heads her way. We get to see Laura and Michael after their date, she thanks him for the dinner and claims to have had a great time. Not knowing what to say, Michael apologizes and admits that he's not good at dating. His wife was the only girl he ever dated and married. She knows that it must be hard for him after his wife's death, but he will have to get out of his shell eventually. He laughs and admits that she reminds him of his son. Smiling, she asks whether there will be a second date and he brushes her off in the nicest way possible. Kissing his cheek, she thanks him for an amazing date and claims that whoever he's crushing on is a lucky girl. 
After the date, Michael and David head to Chester's to enjoy a meat pizza. Kim asks him how the date had gone, but he asks her whether she can sit with them for a while. Chester lets her have a break and they sit down to enjoy the delicious pizza. David asks his father for some money for game coins but Kim asks them to wait as she leaves the table. While she's gone, David advises his dad to invite Kim on a real date. However, Kim is working for him and that's something that is stopping him from being with her as he doesn't date employees. Thinking of other solutions, David suggests he fires her, dates her, and then hires her again. Returning to the table, Kim hands David a cup full of tokens and the young boy runs to the gaming machines. They go out for some fresh air and Michael tells her all about his former wife Claire. The death of his wife is devastating for him, but he claims that he wants things to change. Confused, she asks him what he means and he admits to having been struggling with his rule not to date any employees. Knowing that she is the first girl he wants to date after three years, she decides to quit working for him. Running back to the restaurant, she calls out for Chester to ask whether she can work full-time. Seeing her risk her intake just to be with him proves to Michael that she is serious. After closing the shop, Chester and Kim talk about Michael. Kim claims that it's easier to find a job than a good man. He is someone who is honest and loyal and Kim rarely meets men like him. Chester claims that he is proud of them and proud of himself because he gets to keep her full-time. Speaking of full-time, she asks him for a raise and after some bickering, he agrees. Kim and Dana go back to Kim's new home after grocery shopping. Entering the apartment, Dana asks Kim about Michael. Kim claims that meeting him was accidental and honest. Dana wishes Kim lost her money a long time ago because the real Kim is showing and not the bratty Kim. Looking at her with a smile, Kim admits to having been horrible and asks how she could have been her friend. Dana admits to knowing who the real Kim is, and she's waiting for her to come out one day. At the restaurant, we see Martha and Chester enjoying some time together. She can't believe that Kim would quit her job for love, so Chester asks her whether she's done something crazy for love as well. She admits to not doing anything in a long time but thinks it's not too late. Chester says that it warms his heart to hear those words from her as it gives him hope for their relationship. He walks Martha to the entrance and admits to worrying about her and Kim. He offers money to help their situation, but Martha thanks him and says she could never take money from him. The next morning, James comes over to the building where Martha and Kim are living when he sees Kim exiting the building. She greets him in a rather polite manner and he asks her how she's doing. Her eyes lit up as she admits that she couldn't be better, she thanks him for his generosity and promises to pay him off if she has the money one day. As they're enjoying their coffee, James tells Martha that she has won. Seeing Kim act the way she did makes him think that anything's possible, as she's not recognizable anymore. The plot thickens as we find out that everything has been planned. James advises Martha to stop the whole thing, and reveal to Kim that they're rich, and that the whole plan has been to change the way she is. Martha admits to being afraid to get back to her old life as she fears what the person she likes might think. Plus, she loves spending time with Kim which is something they didn't used to do. Michael and Kim sit on the green grass, laughing their asses off and having an amazing time when Michael suggests they see how good Kim is at batting. Despite missing for the first time, Kim tries again and again until she becomes a pro at it. After playing with the bat, they sit down to relax. Kim lets him know that she has the following day off and promises to be at David's last game. Michael hopes that it's not his last game because if he wins he gets to go to the playoffs. Kim promises to be there, cheering and bringing good vibes for the win. As Chester and Martha are having dinner, he thanks Martha for entering his life and claims to be very proud of her, and Kim. Martha starts feeling bad for lying and admits to not being proud of herself because of it. She admits to lying to Kim and him and tells him the whole story about her plan. Chester understands her plan and sees what she wants to do. He even claims that things that are done out of love should be given special forgiveness. He warns her not to do it again and she promises to never do it. Walking out of the restaurant, he advises her to tell her as soon as possible, since she's gotten what she wanted. Martha admits to getting more than she wanted as her daughter had become a completely different person. However, she's afraid to tell her daughter because she might want to get back at her. Chester suggests he goes with her but she declines his offer as she wants to do it alone. Returning home, she prepares herself to reveal the truth but finds Kim asleep on the couch. She tries to tell her the next morning, but Kim rushes to get to work. David's final game comes and Kim is there to support him and Michael. Fortunately, David wins the games which qualifies him to go to the playoffs. Everybody cheers, and smiles can be seen on everybody's faces. David, like the true champion he is, tells one of the kids that they did amazing, despite them losing. Kim is impressed by how mature David is, so she makes sure to tell him that he's done a great job. However, David claims that the kid is the happiest of all because he gets to go to the Arizona Pro Baseball camp that summer. Their conversation is interrupted by Michael who asks them whether they want to celebrate. The day seems to have been perfect for Kim as she tells Dana over the phone about everything. Kim talks greatly of Michael and David, but Dana stops her mid-sentence and claims to have never heard her be so enthusiastic about anything before. Kim complains that the team's equipment is over 15 years old and wishes she could buy them all new equipment, but unfortunately she thinks that she can't afford it. 
Dana assures her that David doesn't need her to buy the team new resources, and reminds her that a lack of resources builds character. Returning home later in the night, Kim gets scared by seeing her mother sitting in the dark. Martha is ready to tell her the truth about everything. Kim lets her know that David had won. Looking at her becoming a different person, Martha admits to always knowing what she could be. Kim has changed so much and Martha is very proud of that. Before Martha reveals anything, she makes sure to let Kim know that she had done everything out of love. Seems like Kim hadn't taken the news well, as we see her get up from the couch with a cloth on her head. The news was so shocking for her that it made her pass out. Martha starts apologizing but believes that what she has done was for the best. She asks Kim if she has any chance for forgiveness but Kim says the unexpected. She thanks her mother, claiming that she would have never understood how people lived if she hadn't done that. The most important thing is that she never would have met Michael, and experienced true love. Martha agrees as she claims that she would have never met Chester if it wasn't for the plan. Curious, Kim asks if something is going on between them but soon realizes that she doesn't want to know anything. James had put all the money back into Kim's account and a new credit card will be given to her. Martha tells her that she is a rich woman again but Kim claims that she was a rich woman before James did that. But now, she knows what to do with her money. Going to the sports store, she sees Michael and greets him with a hug. He tells her that he has a meeting to go to, so she invites him to dinner before he goes. They're supposed to meet at 8 p.m. And Donner's, which is an expensive restaurant. He is surprised to hear that it's her treat because they're going to an expensive restaurant but promises her to be there. Michael leaves and Kim heads to the register where she gives Dee a list of things for David's baseball team. Confused, Dee asks her whether she's sure she wants to buy thousands of dollars worth of merchandise and Kim lets her know that she is. However, that is not the only thing she'll be getting for David, as we see her write David's name on a letter. Unfortunately, her good intentions are about to be misunderstood as David finds out about the purchase. Returning to the store, he sees Dee pack a large order and when he asks her to see the invoice, she refuses to give it to him. He finally gets to see it and Dee tells him that Kim had wanted it to be kept private. We see Kim sitting at her table when the same waiter that she mistreated when her card was declined comes to serve her. She asks about his name and starts apologizing for the time she treated him badly, despite her being in the wrong. Asking for forgiveness, she admits to having been a complete monster. Brad accepts her apology and lets her know that she's forgiven. Surprised by the sudden kind gesture, he asks her whether he can get her anything, like a glass of wine free of charge. Michael arrives at the restaurant confused, asking for answers. Kim reveals that she's rich again and he asks her what she means by again. Kim proceeds to tell him everything that happened but he still doesn't understand. Kim admits to wanting to use the money for a good cause, like helping him and David. She pulls a letter out of her purse, the same letter that has David written on it. She had paid for the Arizona Pro Baseball Camp, wanting to make David's wish come true. Baffled, Michael asks her why she's done all of that without asking him. She claims that it's a gift, but he asks her what value she teaches him after being told that he can't go. After pausing for a minute, he tells Kim that he doesn't know her story but it seems too complicated for him. I can is all he says before leaving Kim alone at the table. She calls out his name as tears form in her eyes and she starts crying. Returning home, she talks with Martha and claims that it's the money's fault. We get to see that Rebecca and Shauna were never Kim's true friends as they make fun of her. It is bizarre to them what Martha had done and claims that they would have probably died if it happened to them. Now that Kim's rich again they decide to call her and bring her back into the group. Kim sits down with them only for them to force her to go on a date with some guy named Jonathan, despite her claiming that she's not ready to start dating again. Things seem to be hard for Michael, as well as every blonde girl he sees, who reminds him of Kim. We see Kim on a date with Jonathan but we later find out that it hadn't gone smoothly. Dana can't believe that Kim had thrown a plate of fish at Jonathan, but Kim justifies her actions by claiming that he had been rude. Kim can't believe that her friend thought that she would have liked him but Dana reminds her that the older probably would have. Kim's old house hasn't been rented yet, so Dana asks whether she's willing to move back there. Kim admits that the girl that used to reside there was different, and doesn't plan on being like her again. Time passes but Michael can't seem to forget Kim. Looking at their old pictures, reminiscing about their time spent together, he even tries calling her but stops himself. Kim tries to move on with her life, and while she looks like she's holding strong, she misses Michael as well. David decides to take matters into his own hands as he goes to Chester's, looking for Kim. Chester tells him that Kim isn't there and asks if there's any way that he can help. They come up with a plan and Chester promises that he will talk to Kim. Dee notices that Michael is weird as well. She goes up to him at work and asks him whether he's okay. He tells her everything about Kim being rich and how he doesn't believe the story she has fed to him, but Dee doesn't think that he's right. She knows that Kim made Michael happy and that he likes her, her having money doesn't make any difference. But, Michael doesn't agree as he claims that he has nothing in common with her. Are you sure about that is what Dee says that gets him thinking. Chester is surprised to see Kim at work and asks her what she's doing there, having all the money in her bank account. 
Pissed off, she can't believe that Martha had told him about her plan, so she reveals to Chester that she asked for Martha to take the money back. Kim claims that the money was making her a bad person but Chester makes her realize that it was her fault, and not the money. All she wanted to do is help Michael and David but she was misunderstood. Chester tells her to give Michael some time to let his pride wear off, but she claims that he was serious and that it's over for good. Wanting to escape her previous lifestyle, Kim moves into the small apartment she has lived in for a couple of weeks. Dana doesn't understand why she needs to move there and not to another apartment, but Kim asks for her understanding and support. Dana reminds her that she's always been there for her. Kim agrees and that's why she offers to supply everything Dana and her class need. The besties hug as they know that better times are coming. While they're celebrating, Martha is at Chester's worried about the consequences of her actions. She wants to fix the situation and while Chester supports her, he reminds her that she has to bring back her daughter's old lifestyle and not change it. And fix it is what she does, she talks to Michael herself and asks him to listen to her. Sitting down on the bench, she admits to having made it all up. She wanted her daughter to turn into the kind of woman she always knew Kim could be. To show who she is from the inside, Michael admits that he has run the story over and over, trying to make sense of it. When Kim's father passed away, that is the time she used her money to fill up her emptiness, becoming a person no one wanted to be around. Seeing her daughter become such a monster, Martha knew that she had to do something about it. Michael doesn't know what to say, so Martha asks him to give her daughter another chance, being armed with the truth. He admits that he's miserable without Kim, so Martha calls James and they come up with a plan. Kim arrives at the restaurant in the evening, ready to have a meeting with James. While she's expecting a glass of wine from Brad, two champagne glasses along with a bottle are put down on the table. Thinking that it's Brad, she lifts her head while saying that she doesn't want champagne only to see Michael in front of her. Michael pretends as if some gentleman had sent the bottle to her table and leaves a note in his name. The gentleman apologizes for not listening to her, admits to being misguided, and begs her for forgiveness and another chance. He admits to missing her more than ever and even admits that he has fallen in love with her. Kim asks him to get her chair so he can deliver the message to the gentleman. So what do you want me to tell him? Michael asks before Kim kisses him passionately. Their relationship holds strong as we see them supporting David at one of his games. Fortunately, David wins the game and everybody cheers. Michael, David, and Kim hug and as they turn around they see Martha and Chester cheering for them. All of them are happy to have come across each other in their lives, especially Kim, who found her purpose and true love. 